people do not know what it means to be human, nor can they identify what is human this is why people cannot define a woman or discern the humanity of a fetus. Unfortunately, the solution is not a definition. The problem goes deeper than that. However, in clarifying the problem we exacerbate the problem, because there are two realities and the one is not compatible with the other. This is important because the problem is not really when does life begin or do genitalia determine gender. These are just very minor elements in a problem of cosmic proportions. One might refer to it as the problem of the God hypothesis. Regardless, the problem goes back to the issue of cosmic structure and the problem of what is real or what is reality made of. If reality exists and it seems impossible to assume otherwise, it has substance. That which exists has to be composed of something. Now conventional wisdom tells us reality is composed of physical matter but if we ask what physical matter is, no one knows. We know our bodes, supposedly composed of physical matter register the impacts of physical existence on the senses of our body, and these impressions are confirmed to be real by equipment created to mimic the senses of the body. But all of this objective confirmation of physical reality does not actually tell us what physical reality is composed of. This was a far less of a problem before we had the technical means to observe the building blocks of reality because when we looked there was nothing there. The impressions are all there is. Physical forces have no substance, they simply have force. An electron has an electric charge, but in fact the electrical charge is the electron. There is no physical thing with a charge, there is the charge and that is the thing and there is nothing else that is the electron. This may seem to be as far away from questions about transgenderism as one can get. But it is the age-old belief that where there is smoke there must be fire that has taken us into an intellectual dead end. In reality the smoke is the word, and the word is just noise without the information it points to. But information does not have substance. We see the smoke and assume there is a fire, but the perception is the information. However, the vast majority of people not only believe that where there is smoke there must be fire, but that where there is smoke there has to be something that is smoke. In short people have been convinced that the body has substance and that things with substance impact our five senses. We can forgive our ancestors for assuming everything is physical. A Neolithic hunter would hit his hand and feel the impact. He would point out a game animal in the distance and his fellow hunters would acknowledge what they see. The world seemed real to primitive minds, but they had no way of knowing how empty space actually was. But what is force but resistance from an opposing force? Inertia is unopposed force or unresisted force. Weight or mass is resistance to a state of rest. Having weight means the force attempts to maintain inertial velocity. But weight is nothing but one force impeding another. There is nothing substantial that humans can confirm or substantiate. Indeed, all secularists are left with as deniers of God, are disembodied forces. The very thing they deny exists. Reality is a concept, a word with a definition. Try as we might, a human being is nothing more than a word with a definition. The thing we need to question is how do we define what a human being is? The conventional way is the taxonomic way. The creature is looked at and defined on the basis of a few significant characteristics. There is no argument that this has worked perfectly with every creature on earth, plant and animal, until we come to man. Man cannot be looked at and defined. In trying to apply a methodology that applies only to the non-human realm has left us with some weird and unintelligent results. Early biologists wanted us to believe humans were defined by being bipedal or having an opposable thumb. Others claim humans are defined by a larger cranium to body mass. The obvious and often repeated problems with these definitions need not concern us. The problem is these things have nothing to do with what it means to be human. A human is not as other creatures because we are pastoralists. 
we have a duty to care for the planet. This is not selfless, in truth the planet, as a physical entity, is not designed for natural man. We have to civilize and in so doing we have to domesticate the planet. We need to process nature to make more compatible with human life. In one sense we cannot be fully human if we are not engaged in the process of adapting the earth to human life, but it is truer to say we are inhuman if we impede or actively oppose this activity. This negative preparation of earth for human life is called freeloading or parasitism. It is not only inhuman it is distinctly evil. Humans care for the planet but this is not a generalized care. We each have a role in being stewards of the earth. The process itself is called working in faith. Human need to work in faith to produce a desirable outcome. No person can create civilization. Even if we are highly skilled no one has the time or expertise to do everything that needs to be done. So, we are forced by circumstance to specialize. But this can be done only in an environment in which we trust one another. Freeloading does not just harm the process of economic development and add costs onto the process, it causes us to distrust one another, it causes division. Diversity for the sake of diversity is destructive of humanity. There needs to be a thread that holds the system together, and that thread is the faith we have in one another. Without that, we have exponentially worsening division. To be human is to be caring both in the environmental sense and the relational sense, but without faith we cannot get close enough to others to express relational care and without this, our stewardship is in danger of becoming anti-human and parasitic. Humans are pastoralists we are people who care about others and the planet in order that it can care for us. We are defined by the values we create for the community we pastor. Because ultimately a human is not a defined in the singular but by the plurality of a network. Our humanity is bound up in the identity of the people whom we have a relationship with. In biblical terms this is the church. It is not wrong to define humans as the creature that is bound in and by a church. It is as a church that we live in faith. It is as church that we pastor a jurisdiction and express our stewardship of our part of the planet. It is as a church we bind one another. It is as a church that we best express our humanity.